What's up you guys, it's Bart here. It's been a while since I last posted a video on this channel, but I'm glad to say that I'm back now and I'm back with some really, really, really good news for those of you that were here a couple of months ago now. I think it's been about four months. You would have been following my journey of trying to buy my first property here in London at 19. Well, I'm pleased to say that that's finally happened. So in today's video, we'll be chatting about that whole sort of experience, how I managed to finally do it in the end. I'll show you a sneak peek of the property itself and how it all looks at the moment. And then I'll sort of touch on on my future plans and I'm going to make a bit of a series out of all of this take you through the whole process starting with the demolition to doing all the plumbing and electrics to doing the fit out decorations then staging and then potentially selling the property as well so I'll do videos about all of those stages as well as the numbers of the deal and anything else that you guys want to see so that I can take you on the whole journey A to Z so yeah it's pretty exciting I'll stop rambling but that's what's coming up next on the channel so just before we get into the main parts of the video make sure Sure you go down below smash the like button to help me out in the YouTube algorithm and help me push this video out and also don't forget to subscribe so that we can keep growing the channel together and without much further ado let's get straight into the video so I think it's fair to say some of you are sat there wondering why the hell I disappeared for such a long time and to be honest with you this whole property buying experience has been quite stressful for me a lot of things have gone wrong yeah I'm sort of glad it will happen I've learned a lot from it and I'm gonna run through as much as I can with you now. Starting off with what the hell happened to property number two, that also fell through. First property I was ever buying fell through, I got gazumped. Somebody else put a higher offer in and I sort of fell out of the game. The second property I was buying, I thought that it was nailed on, it's gonna happen, it's gonna be great. Unfortunately, we got quite far down the line, I got my mortgage offer, my solicitor found a defect in the lease, there was some onerous clause in the lease and therefore I actually had to report that to my lender, at which point the lender withdrew the mortgage offer, which meant that I couldn't get any, any lending on the property, I couldn't get a mortgage on the property and therefore I had to pull out. So that wasn't great, but then I got a call from the agent a few days later to say actually next door is coming up for sale and it's a probate so it could be something that's interesting when I saw that yeah next time you was putting an offer in we got it all sort of negotiated wrapped up at that point I was crossing my fingers and hoping that that would finally be the one that I buy and that would be relatively simple to get it through obviously it wasn't simple to get through, it never is, but we got it through in the end. So let me just talk to you about how complicated the whole deal was from A to Z and what you could potentially do to avoid that. So I don't want to get into too much of the boring stuff, but I'll run through a few of the basics in terms of the transaction, the whole journey that I went through to get this through to an exchange of contracts. And um, so I put an offer in, negotiated of course, back and forth, back and forth, back and forth until it was accepted. I managed to give myself quite a nice price, probably a better price than the other one that I was buying and legal started so uh, my solicitors applied for searches on my behalf and we got uh, all the draft contract papers my solicitor started reviewing all of that this time round, I asked her to review the lease first thing as a matter of priority to check if there's any defects so that we didn't sort of have to go through the whole rigmarole again and then find out that there's a defect in the lease at the end so I got her to check that first, the lease was fine, so we progressed everything. See, I thought I'd have to be paying a much higher interest rate because uh, I was buying a property about two months before this one. Um, but luckily, my mortgage broker somehow managed to keep the same interest rate, so she just reopened my old file, the one that fell through, changed the property address, informed uh, the bank, Santander, of that, and they were fine with it, and they honoured my initial interest rate, which is huge in terms of you know savings on a monthly basis for me. I was getting a mortgage, I was offered just over 3%, 3.5%. Now people that are looking for mortgages are getting offered 6%, so double the interest, and I was very lucky to be able to keep that rate through Santander. So that was all great. So all the legals progressed. Uh, when it got to the end, well, close to the end, we ran into huge complications. Um, there turned out to be a huge Section 20 notice. The Section 20 notice is something a freeholder serves to leaseholders to inform them of major works that are going on in the building and their contributions that will be required towards that. So in this case, there's a section 20 notice that required, I think around 100,000 pounds worth of work. There's three flats in this building, 100,000 divided by three is about 33,000 pounds each for my calculations. Now initially the seller had set out to leave a retention around 10 to 15,000 pounds. Obviously that was never gonna be enough, so we had to negotiate all of that and get an extra 15. So in the end, I've got 30,000 pounds in a retention, which is left behind for me to use towards those section 20 work. So what a retention is, is an amount of money that's held back on completion from the seller by the seller's solicitor, which I can then access and use for the, the purpose of the retention. And the purpose of this retention is to pay for 
uh, the Section 20 works. So when I get an invoice for the Section 20 works, which includes uh, uh, renovating the communal areas, doing the new roof on the building, painting the building, all of those things, I'll be able to just pass that invoice on to the seller's solicitor and they'll pay that for me or they'll give me the funds so that I can pay for that, if that makes sense. So a lot of legal com complex stuff that had to happen there, riders in the contracts and whatnot, but we got through that. There was one more major thing that really needed to happen so that this transaction was successful um, and it's to do with the lease. So to put it simply, the current lease on the property is 93 years. Now, in the UK, that's considered as a relatively long lease and you can get a mortgage very easily on 93 years and that's fine. However, in my experience as an agent, when you try to sell properties with 90 year leases to first time buyers or people that aren't really experienced in property, they do start asking questions and they do get a bit scared. Oftentimes they decide against buying a property uh, whatsoever. So in order to sort of mitigate that risk when I come to sell, I decided that I wanted to extend the lease. Now, unfortunately, you can't extend the lease uh, until you've owned a property for two years. So what I had to do is I had to get the current owners to serve a section 42 notice, which is a notice to the freeholder of a leaseholder's intention to extend the lease. That way, because they've served it, I can then, upon completing on the property, take over that process and extend the lease myself, if that makes sense. So, getting these sellers to agree to, the section for, to, to serving the Section 42 notice was hell. It took us weeks, um, and they just simply, simply refused to do it. They felt that the process would be too complicated, there'd be too much risk for them, and they just did not want to do it in case I didn't follow through with extending the lease. So, we had to really go to Hall and back to get that through. I instructed a solicitor to draft the Section 42 notice and to handle the service of the Section 42 notice between exchange and completion. Um, and I sort of did all of the work for it. All I needed from them was a few signatures. So they finally agreed. Uh, we sort of got that done. So uh, once all of that was agreed, we then went ahead and exchanged contracts. And exchange of contracts is when I transfer my deposit, my 10% deposit over to the sellers. That makes me the legal owner of the property. And then after exchange follows completion, which is where the full amount is settled using the mortgage and uh, I can pick up the keys. In this case, I wanted to complete as soon as possible and I'd already been waiting, desperately waiting so long for the exchange. So we set completion as a day after exchange, which with a mortgage is very difficult to, to actually achieve, but uh, we sort of submitted our, our request for funds from the bank quite early. So we had all the money from Santander waiting there for us so that we can exchange and complete sort of the next day. Um, but in between exchange and completion, that section 42 notice that I was talking about, about the lease extension needed to be served. Um, so on the day of exchange, I was absolutely hounding everyone from the morning to get the deal exchanged. My solicitor ended up going into meetings all day, uh, no fault of her own. She told me she'd be in meetings. She passed me over to her colleague, uh, who seemed to be quite senior. Her colleague was fine until she started going for lunch for like two hours <laughs> whilst we're trying to get the deal exchanged. So I was desperately trying to get it through. Uh, we were supposed to get it through at like 11, 12, uh, well 11 in the morning, 12 p.m. sort of thing um, so that my other solicitor could serve the section 42 notice by hand to the freeholders before completion the next day but the deal didn't end up exchanging until 4 p.m. Um, which left her about an hour to find someone in her office in central London to drive the section 42 notice to the building to serve it to the freeholder uh, ahead of completion, which is supposed to take place the next morning. So all in all, it was a crazy experience, but we got there in the end, and I'm very happy that the deal went through, and I officially have the keys. I was gonna try and grab them, but they're not here. Um, and yeah, hopefully that makes sense. Most of it probably doesn't make sense at all, um, but that's a sort of a, a brief rundown, really, as to what the whole process looked like for me um, to get it through and to actually get the keys and to exchange and to complete. So now that I officially have the keys, I obviously have plans to renovate the property. And again, in order to do that, you need lots of licenses, you need lots of notices, you need lots of everything, um, which I'm happy to run through in a separate video if anyone wanted me to. I got the keys on Friday, today's Monday, and my builders have already started work, they've already started demolishing. I did go around and take a video of like a before of the flats, which I'm uh, hopefully showing you on the screen right now. Yeah, really old, wooden flooring, uh, two bedrooms at the front, kitchen, oh, well, living room in the middle, kitchen at the back with the bathroom. I'm changing the floor plan completely. I'll put a 
quick snap of, of the proposed floor plan on here and it's just uh, yeah hopefully going to transform the whole space but as I said I'm going to create a bit of a video series about the whole process so that should be quite exciting but yeah I've submitted my building notice I've submitted my license to alterations which is something that's needed to actually make alterations internally to a leasehold uh, flat because of course I don't own the building I just own uh, the sort of the, the leasehold if that makes sense um, so lots of lots and lots and lots and lots of paperwork flying around and going on um, but it's enabling me to sort of do all of these works and yeah I'm very excited to share everything with you in the next video I'll run through uh, the sort of demolition process and I'll make this a bit more of a vloggy type experience and I'll take you to the site um, and we can talk to the builders there we could talk about the plans a bit more um, I had a few quite exciting things happening today like measuring for the kitchen um, and yeah, so this has been a bit of a ramble, this whole video, but I just wanted to fill you in as to where I am with my whole property buying journey. In summary, I've bought the property, it's all fine, and work started today. So it's going to be an exciting journey that I can't wait to share with you. Um, and to that end, please make sure you leave a like to help me out in the YouTube algorithm. Make sure you subscribe so that you don't miss out on future episodes. And obviously turn that notification bell on so that you can watch it as soon as it comes out. Um, and with that being said, thanks for watching, thanks for coming back, and I'll see you in the next video.